This is my presentation about the radio industry. Commercial radio stations aim to produce popular content that will appeal to large audiences. The industry is said to be worth around £600 million at the moment. One of the main players in commercial radio are EMAP. Some of the more popular stations they own are Radio Air, Hallam FM, Kerrang, Kiss, Magic and Viking. Galaxy, Real Radio and Radio Air are the main regional radio stations in my area. Here is a chart showing their listening figures. Public service broadcasting is funded partly or completely by the public. Here is a chart that I created showing the remit of five of the BBC radio stations in the UK. Here is a quote I found on businessweek.com. The BBC has turned to new facilities to develop new digital infrastructure as explained here. This quote from Ofcom suggests that this is an exciting period regarding the development of radio, creating both opportunities and threats for radio in the UK. Not-for-profit radio is usually community and voluntary radio stations that work at a very local level. Community radio gives a voice to communities who are underrepresented. The potential of this sector of radio has attracted funding from other public sector organisations with similar aims. These types of radio are currently experiencing growth due to Ofcom's recent awarding of community radio licences. Student radio relies mainly on volunteers and the Student Radio Association estimates there are 80 plus student radio stations across the country. In the past, student radio stations have tended to run on the basis of long-term RSLs. However, a growing number are now applying for community radio licences in order to expand their remit. PGFM is an example of a student radio station. Its aim is to develop student skills and knowledge of radio, as well as informing and entertaining the public in the local area. The school applies for a short-term RSL, as the station only runs for two weeks per year, and funds are gained from producing and playing radio advertisements for local companies. I worked as part of a team on PGFM to produce and present the content for the drive time slot between 4 o'clock and 5pm. We did one show per day for two weeks. Some of the roles I covered were presenter, interviewer, scriptwriter, producer, editor and programme scheduler. However, I worked as part of a team of course, so some of these roles were shared. The National Association of Broadcasters works to advance the industry, improve the quality and profitability of broadcasting and encourage innovation. The role of Community Media Association enables people to establish and develop communications media for cultural and creative expression, community development and entertainment. The MCPS PRS Alliance ensure composers, songwriters and publishers are paid royalties when their music is used. The ASA use the advertising codes to ensure that the content of adverts across the UK is legal and appropriate. Ofcom ensure that people in the UK get the best from their communication services and are protected from scams and sharp practices. Here is a chart showing where in the UK different percentages of the radio industry workforce are located. The workforce of commercial radio is more evenly spread across the UK than the BBC workforce, which is based mostly in London. Approximately one-sixth of the total workforce is based in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Almost two-fifths of the total radio workforce is based in London. In community radio, half of the workforce are graduates. About a third have no formal qualifications. In the BBC, only about one in six have no formal qualifications. Around a third of employers look specifically for media graduates and two-thirds favour graduates in other subjects. Here are some of the skills future workforces may need in order to have a long-term career in radio. Here are the job roles that radio will be likely to require in the future.